Hello friends, this is Ali from Product Analytics Academy. Today we're gonna to learn about how sessions work in Mixpanel. Session related questions are very common when dealing with product analytics. You might wanna know how long your sessions last, how many things users do per session, and so on. But the thing is, the term session doesn't have a universal definition. Each company and each product can define it differently. That's why Mixpanel allows you to analyze user behavior by sessions, but also lets you choose how you want to define a session. And that's what we're going to focus on today, the different ways you can define sessions in Mixpanel. Every Mixpanel project by default has a pair of virtual events that signify the start and end of a session, and they are called session start and session end. I say virtual events because you're not triggering these explicitly like you do with other custom events, and they can be set up to get triggered whenever you want them to. And that's essentially what we mean by defining sessions. We're defining when these session start and session end events are going to get triggered. You can see these virtual events in any of your reports. Here I have an insights report open, which you can access by clicking on reports and then selecting insights. So I'll come here to the event selector and I'll just start typing in session. And you'll see that the two events show up as options. They're always going to be in there in every project and we're just going to figure out the different ways you can set them up to get triggered. But to adjust your session definitions, you need to go to your project settings, which you can access by clicking this gear icon and then selecting project settings. And then you scroll down over here to where it says session settings. This is where you can define how your sessions are going to be measured. There are three different ways to define sessions in Mixpanel. There is timeout based, which is the default. There's event based, and then there's property based. I'm gonna cover these three methods one by one and I recommend watching all three so you can see which one suits you the best. But if you're looking for a specific kind, use the timestamps in the video description to jump to the part you want. Let's start with timeout based. You have a few things that you can change here. First off, you can change the timeout duration. The default is 30 minutes but you can make it be any longer than that or any less than you want. You just have to define it in minutes or hours. This tells Mixpanel how long it should wait for a user to trigger any events before it designates them to be inactive and trigger the session end event. To decide on the duration of the timeout, think through how long a user might be still using your platform without triggering any events. For example, if they can be using your product for up to an hour without triggering an event, then you want to set the timeout to be more than an hour so Mixpanel doesn't assume their session to have ended even though they're still using your product. The default of 30 minutes is a good number if you aren't sure what to set. Then we have a list of events to exclude. That's one of the other things we can customize. Remember that the timeout based approach starts a session whenever the user triggers any event and ends it when they don't trigger any events for a duration such as 30 minutes. But maybe you only like to consider a user to be active in a session if they're doing specific things as opposed to just viewing different pages. In that case, you will exclude the events for page views by adding them over here. So I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna go page enter, for example, is going to be an excluded event. This way, a user session will not start if they just enter a page and it won't end if all they're doing is viewing random pages. The third option here is for session properties. Remember that a session is defined by the session start and session end virtual events and that those events have some default properties of their own like session duration. Here you can also pick other properties from your existing events to get attached to the session start and end events. The value of that property will be taken from the first event triggered in the session that has that property. For example, let's say you have an event called page enter, just like we showed over here, and it has the title of the view page as a property. I can take that page title event and I can add it over here. Now, whenever the session start and session end events get triggered, the page title from the first event that had triggered the session start is going to be attached to them as a property as well. Now, if I have page enter as an exclusion, then it's not gonna work for this. So I'm gonna get rid of this right now. But if you don't have your page enter event excluded, which I don't over here, and it has this page title property, which it does, then you can add it to your session properties. And whenever session start and session end trigger, it will have this property for that event alongside it. 
This way you can do things like see which pages tend to start your sessions the most by taking session start events and breaking them down by this page title property. So that covers how timeout based sessions work. To recap, a session start event is triggered as soon as the user triggers any event and a session end event is triggered when the user didn't trigger any events for a timeout period that you can define over here. You can exclude however many events you want by adding them to the excluded events list or you can select a set of properties from the events within your session to be appended to the session start and session end events using the session properties section. Just remember, whenever you add these, you need to actually hit the update button for them to register. Timeout based sessions are the default setup for mixed panel projects, and they're good for any type of product, but especially web based applications. This is because it's hard to give a definitive start or end to a web browsing session because a lot of times folks will keep a browser tab open for a long time even if they're not using the product. Or they'll keep switching back and forth between your product and another one. So the best way to separate sessions is simply through periods of inactivity and that's what timeout based sessions are for. All right, now we're gonna look at the second approach to defining sessions, which is event based. You can see it by clicking on the definition type and selecting event based. This method is pretty straightforward. You define a specific event to be the session start and another event to be the session end. For example, a page enter event can be your session start and a page exit event can be your session end. If you have a mobile app and you trigger events for when the app comes to the foreground and another one for when it goes to the background, then the foreground event can be the session start and the background event can be the session end. That way, every time you look at the session duration of session end event, you're looking at how many seconds the app has been open for. This is something we talk about in both our video about measuring average session length and our video on measuring time spent in app per user. Both videos are linked in the description if you're interested. The other two options for excluded events and event properties are both available with this method as well. Though the exclusion feature doesn't really apply here because you're telling Mixpanel specifically which events to start and end the session with. So you can kind of ignore it for this type. As for the session property option down here, it's the same as before. You can select some properties from the events within a session to add to the session start and session end events. The values of the properties will be taken from the event that triggers session start. So in this case, it will be taken from the page enter event that starts your session. Again, the value here is that if you take that property and append it to your session start event, then you can break it down and see, hey, my sessions typically get started with this particular page title. Event-based session definitions have a bunch of different use cases, but a big one is for mobile apps. Like I said before, you can have an event for when your app comes to the foreground and another one for when it goes to the background. And if you set them to the session start and session end events, then it gives you a really easy way to measure how much time people are spending within the app. This is particularly good for apps that are focused on content consumption, like social apps or music player apps, video player apps, and that kind of thing. Time spent in app tends to be a good metric for those. And because of that, this type of session definition works really well for them. And last, but certainly not least, we have property-based sessions. You can select that from the definition type drop down, just like we did the previous methods. In this method, you select a property as a way to distinguish between sessions. As soon as the property value changes, a new session is considered to have started. So for example, let's say you're a gaming company and you want each round of your game to count as one session for the user that's playing it. Then you'd want to be tracking a round ID property with all of your events. And that's what you set as the session ID here. That way, when a new round starts, a new session starts with it. And then as soon as that user triggers an event that has a different round ID, which means that they've started a new round of the game, then Mixpanel will also end the previous session and start a new one for you. As always, you can exclude certain events from being taken into consideration here. Like if some events will always have a random ID, you don't want them to unintentionally end the session because of that. And you can pick properties from the events that start each session to add the session start and session end events, just like the other two methods.
Property-based session definition has somewhat unique use cases, but I think games, like I said, are a good time to use them because they tend to have a very defined start and end to what constitutes a session. So for that type of situation, keep property-based sessions as a option in mind. So there you have it, the three ways to define sessions in Mixpanel. To recap, the default is timeout-based, which means the session starts as soon as the user triggers an event and ends when there's a period of inactivity. This method is applicable for all types of products and works best when you don't have a specific event or property that separates your sessions, but you still want to divide user activity into sessions. This tends to be the case for web-based application. Then there's the event-based method, which is where you define which event will start a session and which event will end it. This method works best when you know exactly how you want the session to start and end, and you have an event for both the start and the end. For example, you have an app and you consider a session to be whenever the app is in the foreground. In this scenario, you can track one event for when the app is coming to the foreground, which you set for the session start event, and another event for when the app goes into the background, which you designate as the session end event. And lastly, there is the property-based method, in which you designate a property as the identifier of a session. When the property is triggered on any event, it starts a session for that user. And when the same property is triggered for that user on any event and the property value is different, that will conclude the previous session and start a new one. This method is good when you have a very explicit value you can track that corresponds to each session. The example I gave was for when your product is a game and you want to count each round of that game as a session. In that scenario, you can track a round ID property with all of your events and set that round to be the session identifier. That way, all the events triggered in the same round will belong to the same session. I hope this helped you all. Now that you have a good understanding of sessions, I recommend checking out either of the videos linked in the description which focus on measuring average session length as well as time spent in an app per user. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about product analytics, check out the other link in the description to a free course that teaches you how to set success metrics and KPIs for your product, which you can then use Mixpanel to measure and monitor.